Hey everyone, it's C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life doing another episode for season 16. This is episode 4. What is the cognitive attitude of the inferior, aka the aspirational function? And today we're going to be discussing the uh, inner workings of uh, this particular cognitive function. It is the fourth cognitive function in our eight cognitive function stack. Uh, it is the fourth cognitive spectra. If you don't know what that is, please review season one and watch uh, the episode featuring Mr. Radiohead, uh, the, um, uh, the eight cognitive spectra. So you have an idea kind of how our minds work with all eight cognitive functions together, uh, behaving like a radio and our minds are like transceivers uh, going into different uh, spectra, etc. So make yourself aware of that and get in on that lecture so you can kind of follow along with what we're talking about here in season 16. Uh, before I begin uh, this particular lecture, I would like to remind everyone that we have a giveaway right now. Understanding Yourself and Others, an Introduction to Interaction Styles 2.0 by Linda Behrens. In order to win this, all you need to do is be a subscriber, leave a comment, and a like on this particular lecture. The winner will be announced on the next lecture that I do for uh, or with a whiteboard, basically. And I'll be writing the name on the whiteboard. Uh, to announce the uh, specific uh, winner of the book giveaway. So yeah, that's the giveaway. So with that being said, since, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the uh, Kanye West uh, How to Type uh, lecture or stream, uh, Jab has mentioned that I need to keep my introductions as short as possible, even though we all know I'm going to probably make them drag on for all eternity. So based on that, let's actually dive into the lecture at this time. So, the inferior function. The inferior function is known as the second gateway function. And in my opinion, it is the absolute most important function, other than obviously the child as I, as I, you know, as we go through it. But quite honestly, it is the most important function in the ego. Yes, it's very sensitive. Uh, it needs to be taken care of. It needs to be maintained. It needs to be uh, looked after. It needs to be nurtured consistently. Uh, if it is ignored, uh, dire straits for anyone and huge warnings uh, because if you ignore the second gateway function because the second gateway function is linked to the fourth gateway function, also known as the demon function, these two functions interact with each other in uh, some big ways. And if this function is not handled properly, it will cause some serious problems uh, for anyone. Uh, that could be externally and internally. So be very careful when you're handling the inferior function because if you are not careful, disaster, actual disaster resulting from a superego activation in a very negative way, boom, exploding someone's life or lighting it on fire per se, will happen if the inferior function is not maintained properly. And that also includes abuse thereof. So, but let's talk about the inferior function, what its attitude is, how it works mechanically, and uh, and what it is and what it does for it does. Um, so, but again, before I go through it, do not forget this comes from John Beebe, Dr. John Beebe. Uh, his uh, his work, I'm like not plagiarizing here and giving credit where it is due. John Beebe talks about the cognitive functions, the eight cognitive functions, and their various attitudes. Hero, all hero, parent, child, inferior, nemesis, uh, critic. He calls it like the scenic, but we prefer the critic. Uh, the uh, the trickster and then obviously the demon also known as the parasite etc. That that the theory of the eight cognitive functions and their attitudes comes from Dr. John Beebe. So if you want to find out more about that, read his stuff and uh, then you'll be more acquainted with the theory. Uh, my presentation of his theory is basically kind of you know his theory plus some things that I've adjusted to it and added to it to make it like make more sense for like the lay person instead of like all of those academics hashtag not intellectuals uh, who spend so much time with their nose in books at all day long and, and think they're expert psychologists with credentials and whatnot but I'm trying to explain it in such a way where anyone can get it and have the benefit as a result so anyway with that being said let's do this okay so, for those of you listening on the podcast, let's check this out appropriately. So, uh, remember, introverted feeling is known as uh, morals and principles. A person's morality, a person's uh, principles, comes specifically uh, from knowing uh, that cognitive function or having that cognitive function in the top four uh, slots of the mind, also known as the ego. Then we have extroverted thinking, it is known as rationale and beliefs. 
We have extroverted feeling is ethics, introverted thinking, which is logic, AKA true false awareness. Uh, we have extroverted sensing, which is knowledge of, or awareness of physics or the mechanical awareness or uh, uh, awareness of the moment, everything that's happening in the moment, what other people are doing, uh, giving sensations to other people, etc. And then we have introverted intuition for willpower. It is desire, it is passion, uh, willpower. It's what they want to do. Uh, finding the best path forward for themselves and taking themselves in that direction and wanting to do that and being a part of that direction. And then we have introverted sensing, uh, which is about loyalty, duty, honor, endurance, uh, steadfastness, uh, long suffering. Uh, also, for some reason, I don't know why it's written, but faith, a person's faith is derived from uh, introverted sensing. That's why, that is why extroverted sensing users because if they have an SE user, they have it in the top four, which means introverted sensing is automatically in the bottom four. That's why those people struggle with faith more than anyone else, for example. They also struggle with patience. They struggle uh, with long suffering or endurance. They just lack endurance. They lack the ability to outlast things and they just kind of burn out like that. Uh, kind of like a flame uh, burning something and then it just extinguished as soon as all the fuel is gone. And they kind of just last for a few seconds and then they go. That's why extroverted sensors get very, very ragey in the moment, kind of like going Super Saiyan a bit. And then all of a sudden, they're not anymore. Why is that? Well, because they just, you know, that's why SI users just outlast them. Oh, he's just mad right now. He's getting all ragey. He'll stop being ragey and then it'll be over, right? Because expert sensors have to react to the situation right now instead of later, etc. That's how that works. And then expert intuition, which is metaphysics, awareness of metaphysics, also known as prescience, the ability one has to see into all potential futures, all potential fates, their own fate, as well as everyone else's fate, but it's just limited range, whereas introverted intuition is seeing one per, uh, one's own fate only, but seeing really far forward in the future with that fate, and then being able to try one future at a time until they find the best one for themselves, but they could see really far into the future, whereas expert intuition is aware of all futures simultaneously. It's just a bit limit more, it's like a limited range. So the difference between introverted intuition, which is a sniper rifle, then you have uh, the shotgun. So for uh, expert intuition. Uh, so continuing on for uh, those on the podcast, just to benefit them here, ESTJs have FI inferior, so do ENTJs. ISFPs and INFPs have TE inferior. ISTPs and ISFPs have FE inferior. ESFJs and ENFJs have TI inferior. INTJs and INFJs have SE inferior. ESTPs and ESFPs have NI inferior. ENTPs and ENFPs have SI inferior. ISTJs and ISFJs have NE inferior. So now let's actually talk about what those actually look like. So what is the inferior function? What is its attitude? Well, when it first starts out in life, the inferior function is all about fear, insecurity, fear and insecurity. So, uh, so yeah, insecurity. It's where a person's insecurity exists. So obviously, it is probably the most painful pressure point anyone has with their mind. If you're going to hit somebody in their inferior function, good luck. You're going to have an immediate violent reaction to the point because of how the inferior function, the fourth function, the second gateway function is attached to the fourth gateway function, also known as the demon function, because it has that relationship with it. Because if the inferior is not being properly defended by the parent function, the child function, or the hero function, it will immediately go right down to the demon. And the demon will come out and holy smokes, everything is literally on fire. Wow. So like, be careful when you're dealing with the inferior function. If you are constantly giving someone crap or constantly abusing someone based on their inferior function, you're going to cause them to develop hatred for you immediately. This is why when you're going into like a, a combative situation with somebody, like say you're gonna get into an argument with somebody or say you're going to confront somebody, you save the inferior function for last every single time. Because if you immediately hit them on their insecurity, they will immediately go to blows because you're hitting them in their vanity. Yes, vanity is another issue. Vanity is very linked to insecurity because a person is their most vain in their fourth function because it is what they are afraid of. For example, 
ESTJs and ENTJs are afraid with their morals and principles. They are afraid that they are not moral enough. They are afraid, they are insecure that they are literally bad people or that they lack principles, okay? Or we have the ISFP and the INFPs. They are afraid about what other people think about them. This is why they take their reputations very seriously. Reputation is everything to IFPs, everything. They need other people to believe good things about them, to believe that they're smart, to believe that they're good people. It doesn't matter if they're actually good. Okay, let me say that again. It does not matter if they're actually good. As long as other people believe it, they're good. In the absence of communication or explanation, perceptions become reality. As long as other people think I'm a good person, then I feel like a good person. Doesn't necessarily mean I actually have to be a good person. Or ISTPs and ISFPs. This is where you get, uh, so, I mean, we have insecurity. Also, uh, I'd like to add anxiety. Anxiety is another source. This is where we get social anxiety. Social anxiety for FE inferior, social anxiety. These people, ISTPs, INTPs, are literally afraid of making other people feel bad. And this is why they are prone to guilt. This is why you can never ever tell an ITP that they are uncaring because it's hitting their inferior function and they will immediately put their fists up, especially ISTPs, or the INTP will just be super apathetic and just pretend you don't even exist. You'll be ignored. You're like dead to them for like the next day or so because you told them that they're uncaring when they're actually some of the most caring people in the world. We'll talk about in a second. They are afraid of making other people feel bad. And as a result, they are prone to guilt. Remember, anyone who has FE in their top four functions, they are prone to guilt. And these people, ISTPs and ISFPs, are especially sensitive. Be careful. Do not screw with them in that way. And then you have TI inferior, ESFJs and ENFJs. Wow, TI inferior has really earned these two types, the dumb blonde stereotype. Would you guys stop with the stupid stereotypes? I mean, seriously, like I come on this channel and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, Kanye West, he's an ENTP. And then they're like, well, he doesn't fit the stereotype of ENTPs. So what? Who cares? Like seriously, get off your stereotype high horse for a second and actually just analyze. Recognize that people can have the same nature, but they can still somewhat behave differently because of the human nurture in their life, because of the culture. Kanye West's culture is different potentially from any other ENTP you've ever met. So obviously he'd be like different from other ENTPs specifically on a cultural basis. No, that would never happen. Human nurture is not that important. Wait, actually it is. That's why I have season four, six, and 13 to talk about nurture on this channel. What? ESFJ, ENFJ, TI inferior. Why? It's because they are afraid that they are incorrect. They are afraid that they're not intelligent. They are afraid that they do not know what is true or false and they have to spend so much time thinking about everything and it has earned them the stereotype of dumb blonde or being a dumb or a stupid person. They are not stupid. TI inferiors are not stupid. Do not stop telling ENFJs and ESFJs that they're stupid. They're actually pretty smart and they can become super mega brilliant if you actually give them the time to think about everything and verify everything on their own. But no, oh, especially, you know, people in American culture, you know, American first world culture, you know, everyone's so impatient and not willing to wait. So then, we don't wait for these people, and then as a result, they end up getting the stereotype that they're stupid because they take so long to think about everything. No, it's just that at the end of the day, they have to be absolutely 100% correct, and it's not their fault that the rest of society isn't going to wait up for them to think. Stop doing that to these people. They don't deserve it. Then... INTJ and INFJ, ah, oh, SE Inferior. I love SE Inferior, it's so awesome. Why? Because they are afraid of giving me a bad experience. Because they are afraid of smelling bad, of sounding bad, of dressing poorly, of, you know, being, they're, they're afraid of being too fat, for example. They're, uh, they are afraid of just 
looking terrible. They are like, they are very vain in this area with how they look, how they sound, anywhere the five senses can be given to another human being, any kind of sensation through the five senses that could be received by another human being, that is where there is. And another way of looking at it is performance. SE inferiors have serious performance anxiety. This is why SE inferiors spend a lot of time thinking about sex instead of actually having sex. Because they are afraid that they're not going to be good at it. Even if they've had like 20 plus partners and have dominated in the bedroom. Any new partner, they're just afraid that they're not going to be good enough this time. They're afraid that they're going to perform badly. And then this person is not going to want to have sex with them again. And that this person is not going to be wanting me to be loyal to them anymore. And then actually go with somebody else instead of them. Wow. So instead, what you want to do is tell these people, hey... You make me really comfortable. Hey, you always give me a good experience. Take the fear away, okay? Be careful, watch out there for their performance anxiety and tell them that they perform well. Tell them if they perform bad, they need the feedback. Give them the feedback that they need and then they will perform better because they are just constantly focused on providing you, their audience, the best possible experience, bedroom or not, the best possible experience every single day. That's how they work. Then you have introverted intuition inferior, ESTPs and ESFPs. They have no idea what they want. They are so afraid of wanting the wrong thing. They have to spend so much time looking at what everyone else is doing in order for them to figure out what they want to do. This often leads to failure to launch syndrome or changing their major seven times and racking up this huge amount of debt, trying to quote, find themselves or in the ESTP case, have lover after 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 lover until all of a sudden you have over 400 plus names in your little black book. And it's like, well, I don't know what I want. So I'm just gonna try them all because I'm not sure I want, I know what I want. Wow. Fear really screws with these people. Failure to launch syndrome, it's a problem. Having that fearful willpower, that's an issue. Don't do that. Be careful. And then there's mine. SI inferior, ENTP, ENFP. I'm afraid of having a bad experience. I'm afraid of doing something I've never done before. To the point where I actually have to force myself against my own will to do things I've never done before. You know, like this YouTube channel. I've never done anything like this before, but something really bad happened to me at the beginning of this year and then I decided, you know what, if I die now, then all of this could be lost, so I'm gonna put it up here on YouTube. Especially in hopes that one day my son might actually like inherit this, this, uh, this science and be able to forward it after me, right? Don't want all this to go to waste, so here I am here on YouTube and on the podcast explaining to y'all how this works, right? Because I am afraid. And oftentimes I'm afraid that I'm not loyal enough I'm afraid I'm not doing my duty enough. I'm afraid I don't have enough faith. I'm afraid that I'm lacking honor. I'm afraid I don't have endurance, steadfastness, right? I'm afraid that I don't have enough long suffering, that I can't take the hits. Young ENTPs and young ENFPs, this is oftentimes when people start saying that they're pussies because they're just too afraid to do things they've never done before or afraid to take any hits. That's why I force myself to get involved in martial arts, to learn how to take the hits. Because life is not about the blows you land. Life is about how many hits you can take. And that's everything SI Inferior is. That's what I have to learn. And I have to force myself and have self-discipline to be able to move forward in life. And then we have extrovert intuition, metaphysical inferior, metaphysical fear, fear of the what if. What if there really is a ghost in my room? What if someone's gonna jump out at me in the dark? What if I'm going to get in a car accident today? What if someone's going to kill my parents? What if someone's going to sell me the wrong drug and I'm gonna get really sick and die? What if I, or, or what if this happens to our family? What if our house burns down? What if a plane crashes through the roof? What if a train comes by and derails while I, you know, while my family's on it? What? What if, 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 fear of the what if, right? 
This is why ISTJs and ISFJs are very afraid of the what if. This is why they need to have common sense. This is why they need to have something concrete so that they don't have to be afraid of the what if, of the immaterial, of the intangible. They need something tangible so they can feel secure. Tangibility is everything to them. This is how fear works. The inferior function is all about fear. It is all about insecurity, right? You know, it, it, it goes in every possible direction. Recognize that fear is there. But if you can turn fear into aspiration, or if you can help them let go of their fear, you have yourself an amazing relationship with these people. These people will love you. If you do that, you will actually be able to cause another human being to become happy. The inferior function, the second gateway function, is the gateway into a person's happiness. It is the gateway into the subconscious, and it is through the subconscious that mankind can actually be happy for once. That is the source of happiness. You want to be happy, you need to develop your subconscious. And the only way to develop your subconscious is to develop your inferior function. Let go of your fear and instead turn it into aspiration. Let me show you how they aspire. Introverted feeling. When it aspires, it becomes very altruistic. It has the highest moral principles. No one can out-moral an ESTJ or an ENTJ when they're aspirational. No one can out-reference an ISFP or out academic, an IS or out reputation, out popular, they can't out popular, an ISFP or an INFP with their TE inferior. Like, you know, those ISFPs, uh, uh, like for example, um, you know, uh, various movie stars or various, uh, uh, you know, band leaders, uh, lead singers, songwriters, etc. cetera. Uh, I don't know, isn't like Ed Sheeran an ISFP? Just saying, but uh, anyway, no one can outpopular them when they're aspiring. You see what I'm saying? Or ethics. No one is more giving than an ISTP or... Why does this say... I, okay, that's wrong. This is actually supposed to be INTP. Excuse me. Uh, so ethics. No one can outgive an ISTP or an INTP when they are aspiring. No one can outsupport. No one can outgive. No one can outteach them. No one, when they are aspiring, no one can argue with an ESFJ. No one can argue with an ENFJ. When they really know the truth and they have aspired to do so and they have verified their beliefs, they have verified everything over and over again. They have spent so much time thinking about every single component. No one can outthink an ESFJ and an ENFJ when they're aspiring. No one can outperform S-E, aspirational, with an INTJ and an INFJ. No one can outperform. No one can. And then also, nobody can outlast. No one can outloyalty, outfaith, outhonor. No one can go beyond the endurance of an ENTP or an ENFP when they are aspiring. No one can. And then, beyond that, for metaphysics, no one can predict the what if. No one has higher mastery over metaphysics than an ISTJ or an ISFJ uh, NE inferior at all. No one can outdo them. Not remotely because their predictive skills. I have, like, for example, uh, on my executive team, I have an ISTJ. He can predict the very fabric of space time when it comes to anything politics media uh, uh, consistently on a regular basis because he pays attention to everything. He is so plugged in and when he aspires, he can predict events before they actually come and, to, and take place, even more so than I can when he is aspiring. Even though I have expert intuition hero, which is great and is used on a daily basis, but for him, when it's aspirational, guess what, folks? The inferior function can actually become a stronger function than the hero and outperform the hero with full greatness, right? Only in short little bursts, right? It's not like a constant daily thing like the hero function, but the inferior function can outperform a hero function.
It can when it's aspirational, okay? So that's just how the functions behave between insecurity versus aspiring, inferior versus aspirational, etc. That's just kind of how that works. So when you go into your subconscious, if you are doing it as a result of fear, like when I go to my subconscious, my ISFJ subconscious, and I'm doing it out of fear, and I'm afraid, my ISFJ, the ISFJ is very justice oriented, and I will start, and I'm do, and if I'm trying to defend myself, and I get really defensive, and then, uh, and, I, and it's like, I, it's like I'm pulling out daggers, and I'm ready to like fight people with daggers, you know, and it's like, oh yeah, we're going to stab you, you know, and uh, it, it's going to get pretty violent here. And then while I'm doing it as a result of being afraid in that moment, I actually become vengeful, very vengeful. And this could be a problem. When I am aspiring, I'm like a knight in shining armor, uh, protecting the innocent, right? Protecting the downtrodden, doing it out of honor and having a huge amount of faith when I am aspiring, right? This is an example of what ISFJ subconscious is capable of doing. Where when I'm in my knight in shining armor mode with SI inferior, I could literally outlast any and every disaster that gets thrown in my direction. I am literally the immovable object. And let's see if the unstoppable force can actually move me because guess what? It can't. This is how the inferior function works when it is aspirational and it could become stronger and more capable than a hero function. Not 100% of the time, but just in certain bursts because those bursts are inferior functions. Because remember, when you're going into your subconscious side of your mind, you're going through the second gateway function and you have mastered your fear and you've taken over your fear and you are aspiring as a result, right? Those aspirations are really important. Why? Well, it costs a lot of mental energy. And because it costs a lot of mental energy to use your subconscious in an aspirational way, right? When it causes you to, uh, when you're using all of that mental energy, you get tired, which means you can only use that aspirational function, which is technically more capable, potentially more capable than the hero function for a short burst of time. But when you can, what it's able to do, it's miraculous. And I know we talked about the child function being able to produce miracles. It is fueled, the child function is fueled by the inferior function in aspirational mode to actually create those miracles. Think about it, okay? How do you get miracles to come about? Well, the answer is faith, right? Because if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, aka the obstacles of life, be thou removed, okay? And it will, it will obey you. Why? Well, that's the child function, my extroverted feeling child, and it is divinely trying to make someone feel better, make someone feel valued, make someone feel loved, right? And it is doing this because I am aspiring in my SI inferior and doing it for, it is my duty to do this. I am the knight in shining armor and I will care about this person. I will love this person in any way that they need me to because I want to, because I actually care about them. It is my duty and my honor to do so. Because I have faith. These faith of the introverted sensing, aspirational. I'm just using me as an example because like I'm here, right? Can you use some other examples? Um, well, like ESFP and ESTP, they can literally will themselves out of any catastrophe, literally find a path forward out of any catastrophe because they have absolute total mastery over the physical environment that they understand where all the obstacles are going to be and they can plot a course to get through all those obstacles and they will get through no matter what. It is amazing to see what they could do. And, oh, but those are the guys that like never know what they want, but then all of a sudden right now, all of a sudden they know exactly what they want and they're able to plot that course and get through all the way to the other end. It's like their life is like literally a labyrinth, but for some reason they're able to get through the labyrinth right now. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying when they are aspiring. Or the ISTP, INTP. Oh, those people are soulless people. They don't know what they're talking about. They're like so uncaring. And then all of a sudden they're like the most caring people in the world. And you're like, whoa, how did that even happen? Right? Fear upon transition, 
when you are cognitive transitioning, make sure you're doing it through aspiration and not fear. If you're doing it through fear, like for example, with my ISFJ subconscious, vengeance will come, right? Whereas if I'm doing it through aspiration, then instead it will be honor, justice, fairness, safety. It's a difference. You have to understand that our subconscious side of our mind can actually divert into a very negative thing, negative experience for you and others, and a very positive experience, world building experience for you and others. And it's specifically why. So, and then you know, so aspirational and transition as a result, right? So don't forget also, it is where a person's vanity is. When you hit someone's inferior function, in a negative way, if you hit their insecurity, when you tell an ISTP that they're uncaring, when you tell uh, when you tell an ISFP or an INFP that no one thinks highly of them, no one cares that they have no reputation, that they are not popular at all, for example, or when you tell an ESTJ or an ENTJ that they are bad people, or when you tell an ESFJ or an ENFJ that they're stupid, or when you tell an ESTP or an ESFP that they're aimless, that they have no idea what they want ever, calling them aimless, when you tell an ENTP or an ENFP that they're dishonorable, that they're completely not relied, relied upon at all, for example, and uh, where you tell an ISTJ or an ISFJ that they're too scared constantly and they're, they're, they're too afraid all the time about you know what may happen instead of actually forcing themselves to have the self-discipline to actually walk and get things done that they need, but they're too afraid to go outside sometimes, for example, and you're calling them out on that. When you do this to people, it creates hatred, and they will hate you, and they will never, ever forget it. Do not screw with the inferior function. You will regret it, I promise, because no one forgets when they've been hit in their insecurity. Every single person in my life that has made me insecure, right? Has made me uncomfortable, has questioned my loyalty, questioned my duty, questioned my honor, questioned my faith. I remember every one of them, everyone. And because you know, ISFJ subconscious, because you know, it doesn't forget, it doesn't forget anything, trust me, especially those that have wronged me, especially those that have wronged my inferior function, when given the opportunity, it will take vengeance. And it will remember. It will remember. And if it has to wait for 20 years, so be it. That's how the inferior function works, folks. For example, ISTPs. You know, someone like, uh, you tell them that they're very uncaring, they'll never forget that. And guess what? They will never care for that person ever because they were labeled uncaring. It's kind of a little bit more difficult when it's like their own family doing it and they're kind of forced to care. But when they're away from that family, are they really going to care about that family member? Probably not. Or maybe when an ESTJ and ENTJ is told that they're going to be, that they're a bad person, right? You think they're going to remember? They're always going to remember that person. You think they're ever going to be a good person? You think they're going to be altruistic? You think they're going to be very moral around that person? Probably not. You know, or uh, an ISFP, INFP. You think they're going to include people in their inner circle when they actually really are popular that one time? They're going to remember that one guy that was constantly huckling them in the crowd, treating them like crap. You think that person's ever going to be invited to any parties? Ha <laughs> no, I don't think so, right? Do you think any ESFJ or ENFJ is going to forget about the guy that told them that they were stupid when the one day comes when they're aspiring with their introverted thinking they finally realize that they're really, really intelligent more than most people? Do you think they're going to be willing to help that person in their time of need? Nope. Do you guys see what I'm saying? You know, and then the, the performance anxiety, you know, people like... INTJs, INFJs, perform for other people, give them really good sensations and whatnot, really good experience and whatnot. Do you think that those people are actually going to be like doing something and, and, and really supportive for those people at all? Do you think that they're actually going to go out of their way to give their peak performance for that person, even though that person told them that they will never amount to anything, that they will never perform well? Yeah, I'm talking to you, fathers. You watching this? What a bunch of morons you are. Like seriously, telling your children they never amount to anything? You guys suck. You guys are such losers and I have no respect for you. I mean, come on, you don't even understand yourself. The only reason you're saying that is because you're insecure yourself because you're covering up in pride because guess what? The inferior function 
It is the source of a person's pride because when the inferior function is insecure, they cover it up with pride and vanity. You can always tell when someone's being prideful when they're like in their inferior function, right? You want to hit them in their pride, hit them in their vanity, hit them here. Sometimes they deserve it, right? It's like when I have some INFJ with overactive TI child trying to like be all cocky and everything because that's what happens when you have SE inferior and you know they're all insecure around people, then they start showing off with that performance anxiety and being all cocky about it and I call them out on it. I call them out on it immediately and I crush them. Oh yes, and it builds hatred towards me. Oh yeah, but you know what? That function will never become an aspirational unless someone's around them willing to call them out on their crap and then I expose them about a bit of not being able to perform at all. And then I teach them how to perform well for me, you know, because I have SI inferior and SI inferior certainly, certainly knows how to receive things from an SE inferior. And I call out the SE inferior and then I'm able to grow the SE inferior and grow it into aspiration instead of constant pride and vanity, right? Or the pride and vanity of an ENTP and ENFP. So, like me, someone who claims that they know everything about this or like, oh, I've done that before, even though they've never done it before. But they claim they are. They claim they have. They claim they're an expert, even though they're not. Yeah, real good there, ENTPs, ENFPs. That's effective, you know. Or, or, or the pride, you know, the, uh, of the expert intuitive uh, inferior, ISTJs and ISFJs. You don't see this very often, but you kind of see it more often with ISFJs than you do with ISTJs, for example, is because they're like, ooh, I have my crystal ball and I can see the future. I can predict anything. You need to listen to me, even though they like have no real prior experience and they're like, you know, they're afraid of things that aren't even there and they kind of know that they're not there, but they're like overcompensating that way because they're the one, you know, the oracle who could provide warning to people, even though there's not anything wrong Ooh. yeah that's like stop doing that please stop doing that so just remember these are the inferior functions that's how they work do not hit someone in their inferior function unless you mean to make them hate you okay hitting the inferior function is necessary for instruction of young people especially children especially children that you are raising or if you see someone who is living in pride and not in humility because remember Pride versus humility. This is where it is with the inferior function. If you are living in pride, naturally human beings will want to desire to take you down a notch. If you are living in humility, naturally human beings will want to prop you up. It is very important that you understand that concept. So it's a lot safer for you and everyone else to take on the cloak of humility and recognize that you are not all that in a bag of chips. You really are inferior. You really are insecure, but not forever. Take on the humility, admit your faults, admit your insecurities, admit that you're insecure trying new things, admit that you're afraid of what might happen, admit that you don't know what you want, admit that you have performance anxiety and you're afraid of making other people uncomfortable, admit that you might not know all the facts, admit that you might not be as caring as you should be, admit that you may not be as popular as you feel like you are or hope to be one day, admit that you may not be a good person all the time. Admit these things, admit it to yourself, admit it to people around you constantly. And then that creates this cloak of humility. And all of a sudden, all the human beings around you will flock around you and they will raise you up. And they will develop you and they will make you stronger. And they will take that insecurity and that inferior flaw and turn it into the greatest strength that you have so that you can aspire and then as a result of those aspirations, you can move mountains in your life and the mountains of other people through your inner child function because the inferior function is the fuel for the child, especially when you have full access into your aspirational side of your subconscious instead of the fearful, prideful, vain side of your subconscious. This is who you are, ladies and gentlemen. This is who you need to become. And the only way you're going to do that is if you let go of your fear. So you have to let go of your pride. Admit to yourself your flaws. Admit to others your flaws. Take on that cloak of humility. And through the cloak of humility, you can grow. And then you can learn how to become aspirational. And then once you have mastery over your fears, you can aspire. Do not forget 
Courage is not about being fearless. It's not about fearlessness, although the 50th law, according to Robert Greene, is about fearlessness, but he's not saying, don't be afraid. Well, yeah, sure, don't be afraid or fear not, that's important. But the point is, be afraid, but choose to not make decisions as a result of being afraid. You see what I'm saying? Everyone is afraid. Everyone is insecure. Everyone has these weaknesses. Every single human being you come into contact with has this issue. Every one of them. Your children, your mother, your lover, it doesn't matter. They all do. But all you have to do, right? All you have to do is recognize this truth. Support them. You want to make someone really, really happy? Well, help them develop their fear function. Tell the ESTJ that they're a good person. Tell the ENTP that they are, you know, they're very experienced and that they're a very loyal person. They're, they have a lot of faith. Tell the ESTP, wow, you're really willful, you know, or tell the ESFJ and the ENFJ, wow, you're really intelligent. Support these people. You will bring them happiness. You will bring them pure joy, okay? And then all of a sudden, they will start to aspire around you. And then because of that, miracles will happen. You want to save the world? This is how you do it. Human beings, if you want to become an integrated human being, if you want to become a mature human being, if you want to reach enlightenment, you have to master the inferior function. You have to master the second gateway into the subconscious, and you have to use the subconscious aspirationally and not fearfully, pridefully, or in a vain manner. You use it aspirationally. I mean... It's the only way to save the world. It's the only way to save our species. It's the only way to guarantee the longevity of our species. See, this is what separates the men from the boys. This is what separates the women from the girls. This is what separates the mature from the immature. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, it is the inferior function. You have to be willing to aspire. You have to be able to go beyond your fears, your vanity, your pride. Engage in humility and you will be successful because every, and even if you yourself are not able to make yourself successful because of your humility, someone else in your life, close to you or not even close to you at all, fellow human beings will prop you up. They will lift you up. They will support you. Just watch. Engage in humility and watch them do that because guess what? They'll start to trust you. They'll start to rely on you. They'll start to ask you for advice. They will want to be around you because you have that humility because humility is rare, especially in this first world society. Super, super rare. Become that person. Aspire with your inferior function. Face your fears head on. Face the fact that you are not all that in a bag of chips. Get, get it together. Because if you get it together, you're even better. You're, these functions are even better than heroes. These functions are the functions that we need to rebuild the world. It is world building. It is the foundation. It is the fuel for miracles. If you want miracles in your life or miracles in the lives of others around you or miracles for those that you love, build your inferior functions, become aspirational, change your life, change the world. And guess what? Not only will you be on the path to enlightenment, but you'll be happy at last. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, insightful, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and on the podcast. Leave a like while you're at it. Also, if you have any questions about the inferior function or the aspirational, leave it in the comments below and I will answer your questions. Uh, if you have not made it on our Discord server yet, the link is in the description as well. Join our Discord server is where we read the questions off for our Q&A sessions that we do every week on Thursdays at 9 Eastern. Make sure that you get your questions in uh, so that we can uh, continue to answer your questions uh, for the live stream. And then uh, also you can put up suggestions for who we should be doing in our how to, uh, how to type stream. Don't forget our meetup group. Uh, our meetup group is the link below. So yes, it says Bay Area, but we're actually going to be extending that nationally and potentially even internationally. Uh, we're going to be getting some CSJ ambassadors set up to be hosting their groups in various cities. And I will be visiting at these various cities at certain times. If you want to become an organizer of the meetup group, please contact me uh, through email or on Discord or through the meetup group to be able to do that. And we'll definitely get you set up. Um, 
so yeah, uh, and also don't forget like the book giveaway that we talked about earlier. This one, yes, at the like very beginning of the lecture. So anyway, uh, thanks for uh, watching and or listening tonight. Uh, it's been a rough couple weeks for me, but uh, hopefully I'll try to be able to get into like the swing of things. I'm hoping to release another lecture tomorrow, even though we also have the stream coming on Tuesday as well. Gonna be trying to get some additional lectures out here and there, and uh, we're gonna be starting another season very soon there's only four more episodes of this season so uh we'll be looking into that got some more educational content as well as some practical application content as well so anyways with all that being said have a good night and i'll see you folks tomorrow